Gamecocks. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Billy Whitaker Cars 200. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Race Pro Weekly. I'm your host, Mike Warren. It was an unbelievable Napa Auto Parts Super Dirt Week 47 out at the Oswego Speedway. So let's not waste any time as we take a look at who won the Billy Whitaker Cars 200 in our opening highlight brought to you by Land Home Maintenance. Jimmy Phelps would lead the field of the green for the Billy Whitaker Cars 200 with the Ravina Rocky Keith Flack in tow on the outside lane in the early going of this feature event. Looking to chase him down as the modified scream down the front straightaway. Take a look at this view coming at you with breathtaking speed as they roll him down off the corner. Eric Rudolph about 40 laps into this thing trying to move his way to the inside lane to get by the 43 and keep Flack up off the corner. Larry White would be on the move. He'd slide into the top three getting by Stuart Friesen here at the 50 lap mark. Up into turn number one and two that time, sliding through the slickness of the racetrack. Then Rudolph will go to the race lead about four laps later and take that position away from Jimmy Phelps. Phelps would get the lead right back, though, as Rudolph would elect to pit on the next caution flag, which will put Larry White into that number two spot, looking to chase him down as we move through turn number three and four. White still trying to make that move as Billy Dunn would look to crack the top three as he would look to get by Stuart Friesen up off of turn number two that time with Matt Max looking to follow off the corner. Done with a great move, trying to get by the 43 as the caution will come out with 77 laps to go for the 93 at Danny Varon. Up off the restart, that would put Matt Shepard into the number two spot, and then Batman would go to the utility belt, working it out on the outside lane, looking to sneak around the top side to get by Matt Shepard as they come off by turn number three and four that time, just not enough as they roll down the front stretch. He couldn't get him, and now another shot up off by turn number two for Britain to try to get him coming down. Fast forward to 40 laps to go, and this one is Larry White starting to lead a charge to the front of the field, working on Max McLaughlin for position up through turn number four that time to take the spot away. He'd be looking to set his sights on the leaders as the caution will come out as Pat Ward goes around. Justin Ayer is going to get collected. Gary Lindbergh involved as well as a number of cars come to a stop down in between turn number three and four. Off the restart, here is the 99L with 30 laps to go. Moving into spot number three to get by Billy Decker. Then he go around the outside of Ryan go down for the number two spot and look the lurk behind the 98H to Jimmy Phelps. He'd switch lanes and go to the inside trying to make it stick up off a of turn number three and four. Driving it hard up off the right rear. It would be the 99L with the race lead with just 20 laps to go at the line. Final 10 laps of this one as Stuart Friesen moves into spot number three getting by the five of Ryan Godown when Godown would start to show smoke up off of turn number two. That would end his day for the driver out of Ringo's, New Jersey, but we go to the final lap of this one. Stuart freezing up off of turn number two, trying to chase him down one final time down the back straightaway. They move down into turn number three and four, but he wasn't getting them as Lightning Larry White picks up the win in the Billy Whitaker Cars 200. Second would be freezing, third would be Peter Britton, fourth Billy Decker, and Mark Johnson would round out the top five. The Outlaw 200 at the Fulton Speedway would see Rob Bellinger take the lead up into turn number one and two for the first time with Kyle Coffey looking to follow. Here's Eric Rudolph up on the outside lane looking to make something happen in the top five right away as they will come around with Bellinger leading lap number one as they work down the front stretch. Matt Williamson going to push into that number two spot as he'd sneak by Coffey for the runner-up position down the back straightaway. Then look to set his sights on the race leader, Robbie Bellinger, as he would easily go to the outside as Williamson looking to take the number one spot away, and he does up off a of turn number two. Williamson would be out in the number one spot as Mikael Perrant hits the wall hard in the outside lane, comes down the racetrack, and somehow, some way, doesn't hit anybody. Field would work back off the restart, but then it would be trouble as a number of cars get together up into turn number one and two, and at the same time, Matt Williamson has trouble as he breaks up off the corner, which would hand the lead over. Off the restart, watch the 15 machine of Todd Root up on the outside lane, taking off like a rocket, going to try to get a number of cars off the corner as they fight their way down off turn number two. The 15 machine of Root trying to get past another car down the back straightaway as they continue to battle, but the doctor, Danny Johnson, up at the front of the field in heavy lap traffic, starting to make things work with Eric Rudolph right on his back bumper. 
The Jersey Jet Brett Hearn right there as well, along with the 98H of Jimmy Phelps as they go down the front straightaway with Hearn cracking the top five here early. Meanwhile, here's the 25 of Eric Rudolph going to sneak by the 21 J-Machine down the back straightaway. He'd be your new race leader, but the doctor going to come right back up on the outside lane looking to make a house call on the Outlaw 200. Johnson would make his way down off of turn number four, but then something would break on the machine, and that would be a tough break for the doctor as his night would be done with something going to miss up in turn number two. Off the restart, Jimmy Phelps would have to power to the outside, trying to get by Eric Rudolph for position up off at turn number two. And it would be Phelps with the position. Brett Hearn going to slide into third off the corner. Mike Mahaney up there on the outside lane as well, looking to make it stick as they power down the back stretch. Phelps still in heavy lap traffic, going to bring him off at turn number three and four. No problem on the final lap as he would go on to pick up the win in the Outlaw 200. Eric Rudolph would finish in second. Third would go to Brett Hearn. Stewart Freeze in fourth. And Tim Sears Jr. would round out the top five. Sportsman would go to Brad Rouse. Dave Marcaccilli would come home second. Shane Pecor third. Zach Sabaka fourth. And Brandon Ford fifth. Charlie Sandercock will grab the win in the late models. Novice Sportsman Michael Wagner Fitzgerald. Mott lights to Doug Williams and Chris Bonoski in the four cylinders. It's now time for this week's John Ray and Sons fan poll question, which is... Is it a good move by Dirt Car to secure Oswego for Super Dirt Week for another three years? Head to Facebook.com slash RacePro Weekly to cast your answer. Coming up on Race Pro Weekly, we'll take a look at the Camping World 150 and see who picked up the win in the Pro Stock Race. Hi, I'm Eric Pope. General Manager of John Ray & Sons. We're proud to be offering Bryant heating and air conditioning systems. Just like us, Bryant has been delivering home comfort solutions for more than a century. Call today for a free consultation and save up to $875 with Bryant bonus rebates. I'm Michael Laporte, Service Manager. From sales to service, our goal is to keep you comfortable, whatever it takes. Ductless AC is a perfect solution for homes without ductwork, new additions, or anywhere you need cool relief. Call or visit JohnRay.com today. You know, Mother Nature makes the best products, and Ghent Wood Products in Columbia County has figured out the secret. We use locally harvested trees, milled and kiln-dried right on site in Ghent. We stock rough-cut lumber, green, or kiln-dried. If you prefer finished products, we offer that too, including shiplap, flooring, paneling, exterior siding, and tabletops. Come check out the reclaimed mushroom wood and barnwood siding. We combine the mill experience with a retail store, so you can go straight to the mill and handpick the wood you want. There's only one place in the Capital Region for you to get the full racing action. Stop down at the Bobco Video Booth at the track or call 518-399-0937. Bobco Racing Video, the next best thing to being there. Welcome back to Race Pro Weekly for the Camping World 150. For the small blocks, as it would be Tim Fuller and Eric Rudolph leading the field to the green to see who would take home small block supremacy. Fuller with the lead in the early going as cars will try to work their way up through the field. They see Brett Hearn on the inside lane through the corner. Matt Shepard battling it out with the 44 machine as Stuart Friesen in the early stages. Jimmy Phelps and Pat Ward up there with Kerry Terrence as well as the 3RS look to be way out ahead of this one. But we'll fast forward to the closing stages. Stuart Friesen looked to have a stranglehold, but here's Batman Peter Brayton working it down the back straightaway and up into turn number one and two as they fight for position up off the corner. Britain would try everything to the low side, but Friesen would shut the door on him down through three and four. Then he'd go back to the top looking to see if he had anything, and this is where the momentum would switch as Britain would work the outside lane looking for the number one spot in a turn number three and four as he would take the lead with just seven laps to go in the feature event. Britain would look to hold on as he powered up into turn number one and two, and there was nothing stopping the Batman as he would take out the utility belt en route to a win in a Camping World 150. Stuart Friesen would finish in second. Matt Shepard would come home third. The Jersey Jet coming home fourth. And Eric Rudolph finishing fifth. The 50-lap Pro Stock Championship out at Super Dirt Week would see Josh Kuran and Shucky Dombluski on the front row. Dombluski would take the early race lead. Rob Yetman looking to go six in a row in this event. But C.D. Beauchamp would make his way on the bottom in the early going. Trouble around at turn number two, though, as Chuck Townsley goes around, collects Jake Corbin. Jason Meltz also involved up through the corner. Off the restart, it would be Beauchamp going to try to work to the outside lane of Dombluski up into turn number one and two, but the seven car a little bit too strong for the time being, but eventually the 88 would get by up off of turn number four as he was fast up on the outside lane. 
Cars continuing to work their way through the corner as Travis Welch gets caught up into the outside wall. He would bring out the yellow and look to make it back onto the racing surface. Then off the restart, Beauchamp would have to work to the inside, but that's when Pascal Payet gets into the back of the seven of Rob Yetman, sending a number of cars around together up into turn number one and two. And Yetman's crew would thrash to try to get the car back out onto the racetrack to rejoin the field. Off the restart now, it would be Beauchamp back at the front of the field. They work it down into turn number three and four. Kim Duell and the Curtis Lumberwagon on the move in the top five, looking to make a move down the front straightaway as he would slide into fourth. Meanwhile, here's Kenny Martin working it up on the outside lane as the Albany Saratoga Speedway champion going to go to work on the outside, trying to make his push toward the front of the field. As that happens, Cousin Luke and the 7-11 of Richie Crane get together on the back straightaway, bringing out the caution. Crane would look to rejoin the tail end of the field and make his way off of pit road. Off the restart, Beauchamp would still lead this one as now Justin Knight would make a bid on Dombluski for the number two spot as Martin races with Jocelyn Waugh down the back straightaway. Field continues to work its way up into turn number one and two as they back their way up through the inside lane on the corner. Here's Knight with a shot at Kim Duell down into turn number three and four. Duell going to try to lift the Curtis Lumber Wagon up on the top side as the caution will come out for the two of Pete Stefanski up in turn number four. Crews going to work on the RCT machine, trying to get him back out there. Meanwhile, off the restart, it would be the 88 machine of Beauchamp trying to hold on, but Dombluski would come back on the outside lane and take the number one spot away. Field would work its way off at turn number four as he would continue to lead this one. Martin up on the outside of the corner, going to make a late race push as we go to the final lap of this one. Dombluski up into turn number two, going to try to hold it down the back straightaway, but Beauchamp into turn number three and four will give him a little nudge through the corner, just enough to make it a drag race to the line, and C.D. Beauchamp would pick up the win in the Pro Stock Championship. Second would be Dombluski, Justin Knight would come home third, Kim Duell fourth, and Rob Yetman would round out the top five. When we come back on RPW, we'll take a look at who won the Chevy Performance 75 and then check out the World of Outlaws from Fulton. That's coming up next. Performance. Quality. Service. That's DMC Racing Products. Hundreds of name brand parts. competitive prices that's DMC DMC racing products race to win reputable reliable results that's what you get when you call Rick and the professionals at RCT roofing quality service at fair prices RCT gets the job done, just like Nick Stone and the RCT Pro Stock. RCT Roofing, we've got you covered. If you are a tracker series that would like to be highlighted on Race Pro Weekly, email us at show at raceproweekly.com. Welcome back to Race Pro Weekly Sportsman Championship event. The Chevy Performance 75 would see Dave Marcaccilli looking to go three in a row at Oswego as he would take the early race lead in this one. Cars trying to work their way down into turn number three and four is a heavy capital or district presence in this one. Adam McAuliffe working around the 27 of Robert Pooplak Jr. for position. That's for spot number three as they power off the corner. Dave Constantino trying to run down the 20 of David Schilling into turn number three and four as well as the caution will come out for the 410 machine of Mike Fowler. Off the restart, Mark and Chili would lead this one with Robert Bublak Jr. in tow right on his back bumper. Shane Pecor going side-by-side -side with Adam McCullough for position down in the turn number three and four as well as those two drivers would fight. Meanwhile, trouble on the M1 of Mark and Chili is power steering would let loose on the page trucking entry, and that would end his day. A tough break for Mark and Chili, who would not get three in a row. Off the restart, Andrew Buff trying to battle with David Schilling for position down on the inside lane up off the corner. As Buffer would get that spot, Constantino now on the outside lane fighting down the front straightaway as well. As he would go around the 92 machine, Buff trying to get that spot as it worked down into turn number three and four. Meanwhile, lap traffic would start to become a factor in this one as Bublack continued to lead. But Shane Pecor would look to dive down to the inside in heavy lap traffic. Looking for the race lead off the corner as he would creep up on the number one of Robert Delormier down the front straightaway. Meanwhile, here's Pecor up on the top side, taking the number one spot away, but then Boo Black would slide back down on the inside to take the position right back from him up into turn number two. McAuliffe looked for the number two spot that time. Can't get it as Pecor would take it right back 
Off the corner, number four is Connor Cleveland would make his presence known coming down the front straightaway as well here in the final five laps of this one. Pecor working to the bottom, trying to get by the 27B of Boo Black down into turn number three and four as they fight for position. Now here's Pecor to the inside trying to make a move, but Boo Black holds him right off on the outside. Meanwhile, they go up into turn number one and two. Pecor going to step it up a lane higher this time as they come into heavy lap traffic. McAuliffe sneaks by him up off the corner, but Pecor shoots like a rocket. Final lap now as they both split the number one of Willie Decker up off the corner. Pecor trying to ride his momentum up off the outside lane as they come off a turn number two. He'll take the race lead away. Boo Black one last shot off the bottom, but Pecor just a little bit better as he would go on to win the Chevy Performance 75. Second would be Boo Black. McAuliffe would come home third. Connor Cleveland fourth and Andrew Buff fifth. The greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws, would show the one of Logan Shukart up at the front of the field in the early going of this one, pushing it down to the bottom side of the racetrack. Here is Sheldon Hottenshield working up on the top side as he looked to take a position away, coming down the front straightaway, racing with Shane Stewart up off at turn number two, and he would slide into that spot, working down the back straightaway and into turn number three and four. Meanwhile, Brad Sweet would work the outside lane on the right rear, banging it off the cushion up off the corner as he would look to pick up a position as Houghtonshield continuing to go at it with the two of Shane Stewart up through turn number two as they worked their way down the back straightaway. Branded down off of turn number four, they would go. The 17 machine power to the inside of Stewart looking for that position one more time. As that happens, here comes Donnie Schatz looking to make it interesting as he would look to work into that number two spot, getting by Craig Kinzer for position up off the corner. Kinzer would work his way down the back straightaway behind shots. As meanwhile, here's Hoddenshield trying to close the gap between first and second in the closing stages of this one. He would look to catch Donnie shots up on the outside lane, try to dance off the cushion off a turn number four. Wouldn't get him that time, but then would push to the inside lane, looking to take the number two spot away, and he does. He would sit there, but Logan Shukart still at the front of this one as Hoddenshield trying to power past shots all the way to get to the front of the field, but he wouldn't catch Shukart as he picks up the win at the World of Outlaws at Fulton. Second would be Sheldon Hottenshield. Shots would come home third. Shane Stewart fourth. And Craig Kinzer would finish in fifth. Winning your in race for the Modifieds. Mike Maresco would grab the win. Tim Kerr second. Ryan Arbuthnot third. Justin Wright fourth. And Rick Rickner fifth. Larry White in victory in lane. How's it feel? It feels awesome. You know, he couldn't... Uh... You couldn't build a better dream. Um, you know, we were able to run the car the way we wanted to run it. We didn't have to push it, and it was just phenomenal. You know, that thing was like, the car was honestly on rails the whole time. You know, it, it went wherever I wanted it. You know, we slip up a little bit on the corner entry, and the car was good enough to make it up on exit. And uh, it, was just, uh, it was just a phenomenal day. You know, we... Uh, we really didn't have to chase it at all. You know, we weren't coming in to make changes to the chassis. It's uh, quick fuel and tires, and we were able to keep going. At what point did you think that you had a legitimate shot at winning this today? I think that really, you know, at the beginning of the race, I think we had a, a good enough car to win it. You know, we were able to move right up through, get to the top three, and, and start chasing down the leaders early. And uh, that told us that we had a good car. And then... We waited to just the right time to, to get the fresh tires, but I think right around lap 100 is when we we really started thinking that we had something. You know, uh, we saw Matt Shepard coming in trying to chase his car around. So usually, if a if a guy like that's making changes to the car that late in the race, it's a it's a good sign that he's hunting. Peter, it was heartbreak one year ago, but you're back in victory lane one year later. Yeah, we're here, and uh, as I as I keep saying, you know, we're we're here for Sunday, but uh, this is great. You know, last night was great too, and um, it's you know victory lane at Dirt Week. You, what, what else can you say? You know, it's it's freaking awesome. Um, glad to get Troya back in the victory lane, and glad to do it the way we did it too. I mean, it, was, it had to be exciting for the fans to watch that, and uh, it's what Dirt Week needs. You need exciting races. You need a, a track crew that can give you a track to do that on. You know, because if they don't give you a racy track, it's going to be single single lane along the bottom. So hats off to them and. Uh, my crew and everybody a part of this whole deal. Ray Graham for giving me the chance, and uh, it's awesome. Shane, four thousand dollars richer. How's it feel? Oh man, this is, this is so special. You know, it's just to win that Super Dirt Week. We came so close at the mile with a couple second place runs, and.
to seal the deal here in Oswego where we've only came once before and you know we really didn't feel comfortable all that all week we were we were there we were in the hunt but we didn't feel like we had the speed and uh, you know Mike Wall and Fastline they tuned up our shocks for us my dad put the you know the good setup in it and uh, I just I tried to drive the wheels off at every lap and put a show on for the fans and you know that's uh, that's the kind of races you want to be a part of tell us about those last five or ten laps uh, I think it started picking up just a little bit of rubber around the bottom, so the ru the bottom was coming in, but the lap traffic was kind of holding Robert up, and then I seen Adam poking at the bottom, so I knew I had to be in the bottom on one and two, and just I think I burnt up the tires there the last five laps because I started sliding with a couple to go, just ho uh, you know glad the lap traffic held them up enough, and then I uh, going into three, I knew I had one shot and I put it in there wide open, slid it to the wall, and I know I tagged the wall coming off of four, and just you know got the right rear in the moisture to pull off. Uh, you know, pull it off and put it in victory lane. CD, man, what a race it was out there and what a final last lap. Yeah, it was a crazy finish at the end uh, by a hinge or something like that with Chuck. Uh, we gave all we can on the last lap. On the last two laps, I gave all I can with the car to, to get to the front back and work. You guys were just fast right through the whole race yeah we've got a completely different setup as everybody uh we've been like that all year long on cornwall morris Speedway. we won the championship down there we're second in the points in dirt uh, right now maybe first i don't know uh, where justin finished but uh it's just it's amazing how that car works on the black uh, track it's now time for this week's Nisco Performer of the Week, and with his win in the billy whitaker cars 200 it goes to lightning larry white White is now eligible for the Performer of the Year award given out at the end of the season. With the visor adjust the five point harness. Grandpa, get your credit app. It's time to buy a car. Ladies and gentlemen, the Billy Whitaker Cars 200 is good to go.